No axe sheath, no problem. Today we're gonna to look at how to make a traditional slip cover axe sheath. It's super easy. Um, it's something that you can also do in a field if you have just a piece of leather or a piece of animal hide or even a hide with still fur on it. You can do this. Really easy, great project. This is also a good project for kids. Um, just grab your axe and grab your piece of leather and then we'll get started. Okay, so I have my leather laid out and I have my axe, okay? Now what we're gonna look for here is that we have enough leather to take our axe head times three. So what I mean by that is we have our axe head laying here. If you go to the bit or the biggest part of your axe and take a finger on each side of it, okay? That's about where you wanna be, so we consider that one, okay? We're gonna need that two more times. So an easy way to do that is just take your axe and flip it up this way, okay? Remember, you need a finger in between each, and then another one, okay? So I know, just looking at this, I need from about this line up to here, and we're gonna cut a rectangle out of this, okay? So the top part of my sheath, again, just looking at this, if I would flip my axe generously, and then I would also take that again, I can't flip it because of the handle, again, that's about where we want to be at. We can always trim that up, but we can't add to it. So that's the first part. We want to identify where that's at. And then I'm just taking my utility blade here and very lightly without cutting the leather as of right now, I'm going to mark it up. Okay, just scoring a line. The next part of this is that we want it about a thumb in front of the bit and a thumb behind the pole. Okay, we need extra room because we're gonna have to sew. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the bottom where I initially started about a finger width, a thumb width on the side I'm gonna mark, thumb width on the back I'm gonna mark, and now I know approximately my rectangle size. Now if you're in the field or you're doing this like at a remote area, you're not gonna have a carpenter square or anything like that to get this perfectly square. So my recommendation is just this. Take a piece of string, measure your width, okay? Go up a little bit, you know your width there, so just mark that. About there, get that width again, double check it. Okay, so see I'm a little wide, so I'm gonna come in and mark this again. Double check it one more time. Good, good. And then we're gonna come up towards the top and mark it a last time, okay? And check that again. All right, so we can cut this. If we have a way to make this perfectly square, good. Um, if not, then you're gonna get this close enough just by eyeballing it. We can trim it up later. Okay, so I laid out my pattern now at this point. Now I can go ahead and just begin cutting. We're gonna cut this rectangle right out. Got my piece of leather cut out. What I'm gonna do at this point now is I'm gonna lay my ax about center point on here. And we're gonna fold up one end. We wanna make sure that when we fold this, the ax head is totally covered, okay? Once we do that, what we can do is we can very easily slide that out, okay? Square it up, and then we can crease our leather here. Now, what that's gonna do is create at this point, what looks like a little envelope. All right, really easy stuff. What we're gonna also do is we're gonna double check that our ax bit fits over that envelope portion because what's gonna happen is we're gonna slide our ax down through here and it's gonna fit inside this thing, okay? And then this is gonna be the cover that covers it over, okay, and closes it. So at this point, I'm really happy with how that's laying. If we wanna go back with a piece of string to be very precise and get a nice even measurement on both sides, we can. So here and here, I'm almost dead on. I'm not gonna mess with it too much. Now we're gonna begin sewing. You can use any type of stitch you want on both sides of this to close this envelope in, okay? Um, my recommendation though to use here and here is a saddle stitch. It's gonna be a lot stronger. Okay, so I'm gonna be using artificial sinew for this. If you never use it, it's a waxed synthetic thread. Okay, this stuff is absolutely awesome for repairs. 
looks super traditional too. I'm also gonna be using an S needle because I have to punch the holes in here. So a little leather working trick. Number one, you can either just freehand sew this. So what I mean by that is pick this piece up and just start sewing. You can also take your awl and punch your holes, pre-punch your holes, or in my case, I have my needle with me. What I'm gonna do before I even move this is I'm gonna pick where my sew line is and I'm gonna just punch needle marks right down. I'm going through both pieces of leather here. And what this is doing is giving me a really easy way and a quick way to go back through here and sew without getting super crooked and making it look a little bit nicer as I go. So I'm gonna do one side and then I'm gonna to jump to the other side It doesn't take long to punch these holes, but it's gonna give you a lot better product in the end. All right, so now we have a nice envelope style pouch made. So if you're interested in also making yourself some gear, that's a very easy way to make a pouch. Now this is an exposed stitch, but I think it looks really nice like this for this application. If you wanted to take this a few steps further, some things you can do is where we stitched, you can cut a strip of leather and put a third strip or what we call a welt inside here. That would protect this stitching from your ax banging up against it if you're moving around a lot with it and cutting through. I wasn't too worried about that because this ax sort of just stays at the cabin. So um, I'm just gonna slide that in there. That way it's just not exposed. So we're not gonna be carrying this. But if you're gonna be carrying it, a welt might be a good idea. Another option, if it was smaller, was before we sew it to add our belt loop in the back. So we can take another piece of leather, sew it across the back, and then we would have a belt carrying pouch for a very small hatchet, not a bigger ax like this, okay? All right, so what we're gonna do now is I want you to imagine that the ax is inside here, okay? Bottomed out, this would fold over. I'm gonna show you how we're gonna attach all of that so it's nice and neat and attached to the ax. But right now what we're gonna do is with this set just like that, we need to mark the bottom because remember, we want this handle to be able to go through this pouch. We only want the head in there. So we're gonna get this position where we would want it and then all that we're gonna do is make two little marks here. Now, my recommendation yet again for this, when you make this cut, make it smaller. Try your ax. If you make it too big, it's not gonna hurt too much, but if you make it way too big, your ax is gonna be falling through. You can always open it up more, but it's difficult to try to go back and try to stitch this, okay? So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna make a good hard crease there. And what I like to do is just take something sharp and I'm gonna just scrape, okay, again, along that edge. And then I know exactly where I need my cut at, okay? So I can take my knife or I can take my utility blade and then at this point, I'm gonna get a piece of wood and stick it inside here where my hand is and cut on that. All right, so I'm just taking a piece of wood that we had here around the cabin, and I'm gonna use that as a small anvil underneath. So take your time with this. Make sure everything is situated in the way you want it before you proceed. So I want that just like that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna attempt to make the straightest line possible as I can. Now you see I'm making multiple passes. The reason that I like to do that is because with softer leather like this, if you push really hard and start to drag it across, the leather has a tendency to make waves in front of where you're cutting, okay? So if you do that, there's a good chance you're gonna go off. So just coming straight across like this with your initial score line, coming back through and doing it one more time is getting it done exactly how you want it. So you can see we open that up here perfectly. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna fit our ax for the first time and see how it's looking. So I can tell you already, it's a little bit tight through there, but once you get it past there, it's fitting really, really nice. Look at that. Absolutely 
gorgeous the way that's fitting. I like how it's tight on each side. That way, if the leather does rip a little bit or stretches out a little bit, I'm still gonna have a nice firm fit, all right? Now, at this point, what we're gonna do is we're gonna utilize this top flap to come down, okay, and tie off to the handle. I love tie outs on things. Um, you can use something like paracord or some twine or something if you have it. But what I would say is it gonna be even better for us is to go ahead and take some of that leather scrap that we have left over and cut yourself a nice long strip of it. And that way you can use that as a tie off. If you don't have a really long piece or you don't wanna cut a long piece, we talked about in other videos, taking a circle and cutting it into a spiral is gonna give you long strands. Okay, so I cut out my lacing. So. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to decide where I want my tie out on my flap. So I'm gonna come down towards the bottom, down in here somewhere, okay? And then this lacing was just gonna go through here. And then it can tie off to the ax itself. So I don't wanna say there's any specific way that this needs to lay in here, okay? You could put one hole, you could put two holes. Um, I think for our purposes, we are going to, um, let's see what we could do that's cool. We're gonna make one slit on this and then we're going to just put a half hitch in there. So um, we're gonna go about here. Again, I'm gonna just mark that lightly. I don't wanna cut on this because I don't want to cut through the bottom part of our sheath. And open this up. I don't even need to take the axe out at this point and then really easily Just gonna make a little slice there I'm gonna take my material That I made Pull that through and now I can pull this down nice and tight and I can just tie it off however I would like. I even have enough strapping that if I want to come up and around to do this, I can. But bringing it down like this and then just tying it off is going to be more than enough. And there you have it, a slip cover for our axe. Great leather working project for somebody who wants to just get into leather working. It's gonna teach you to make some cuts on leather, um, a little bit of design and planning, and um, then you can just go from there. So it works really, really nicely. Uh, again, there's so many variations to this that you can make to make your, your work better and uh, really suit your needs, but I like this just like this. It's simple and um, definitely effective. So this is gonna be great for us for around the cabin to keep this just so nobody gets injured on it. Hopefully you give this one a try for those axes or hatchets you bought at yard sales and put a new handle on refurbished and never made a sheath. It's traditional looking and it works really good. And like I said earlier, if you put a belt loop on the back of this with a really small little hatchet, absolutely awesome. So uh, give this one a shot, tool for the toolbox. As always, um, give us a like, give us a subscription if you don't subscribe already, and uh, head over to coldcrackerbushcraft.com for all our classes, school, merchandise, all that good stuff. And until next video, stay in the woods, you leather workers.